Author of A Study of History, Arnold Joseph Toynbee, once said, When we classify mankind by color, the only one of the primary races that has not made a creative contribution to any of our 21 civilizations is the black race. To one in search of self, this could deter you from thinking our people did anything in the history of woman and man. Nothing could be further from the truth. Just looking up the long list of inventions conceived and designed by Poatis, or people of African descent in the United States, alone debunks Toynbee's racially fabled notion. 33rd United States President Harry Truman once said, There's nothing new in the world except the history you do not know. To me, this implies a need to discover, through the study of our history, what exists in the world. Coupled with historian Asa Hilliard's notion of studying history in chronological order, so that one may be able to properly place the state of Africans were in at that time. This can only be done with an acquired awareness of what events happened in the past, for it is these events that led to make up the world as we know it today. We can all attest there's been a concerted effort in keeping black folk around the world segregated in literally all facets of life. We are not in control of our own religion, educational platforms, no currency without Yorugu's influence. And to many, there's not even a thought as to why this is so, or even came to be. Fact is, this started well before the plantation days, and its effects have resulted in an unacknowledged intergenerational disconnect between Powatas, Africans in the Caribbean, Europe, Asia, and our kin in the mother continent. Once I became aware of this, it naturally led me to the question of, how do we get here? I mean, if we are descendants of kings and queens from Africa, as folks say, why are we no longer? I mean, honestly, what the happened? Through study, I soon learned how ancient this problem is. And to some degree, we have ourselves to thank for it. After sharing the ancient teachings of the mystery system in the Nile Valley region to non-Africans, it didn't take long before our history was usurped, plagiarized, and consequently left for easy claim by the Greeks primarily because the knowledge earned in these schools forbade students to write it down, instead having to be committed to memory. Although this is the best way to confirm one knows what they say they know, it leaves an opportunity for one to authorize it simply by writing it down and then dispersing it, which is what the Greeks did. Not to say the mystery system didn't log its knowledge. Starting with the pillage of Alexander the Not-So-Great, around 332 BC, up to 400,000 comedic papyri scrolls were stolen and placed in the hands of the plagiarizing Greeks. Unfortunate to us and to the fortune of the growing number of colonizers, the effect of this theft is the source of our current plight, still battling to self-identify in an alleged multicultural world. Again by design, because the African origin of philosophy and ideological values have been concealed through whitewash, many of us remain unaware of our own legacy. This is a system by design, best explained again by Hilliard. He says, quote, Creators and beneficiaries of belief systems develop a vested interest system to the extent that they become conscious of it as a system. Actions are taken to nurture and to maintain the controlling system intact. Competing belief systems come to be regarded as pagan, heretical, disloyal, and so forth. Priests or professors are ordained or certified as purveyors of the system, sometimes with the belief that they are objective and scientific. The general public usually accepts and comes to depend upon the doctrine or knowledge when an occasional scholar, priest, or member of the general public discovers new questions and new treatments of information, especially information that challenges the bedrock of the belief and thinking system. That person is frequently met with silence, denial, isolation, and even death." End quote. Napoleon's infamous quote, history is a fable agreed upon, couldn't prove to be more evident. We have been seduced into believing Western, better put Yorugu, philosophy is the cradle of civilization, while anything East, with the exception of China, India, and Northeast Africa, as dwelling in the Dark Ages and was brought to the light from the Yorugus of Europe. This system is responsible for the vast majority of Powatas believing this to be true when in fact it is utterly the complete polar opposite. But before understanding the reason to create Greek philosophy, what makes up a philosophy? 
Defined as the study of the fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, and existence, we find in the mystery system of Kemet, it was considered to be a system of salvation regarding the human body as a holding house of the soul that can be liberated physically through studying the disciplines of the arts and sciences, enabling the advancement from mortal to that of God or summum bonum, a cremetic term also known as the greatest good. The critical point of all this is in wanting to know, again, how we lost our position as innovators and leaders of the world, more directly identifying the parties responsible. In order to understand this book, Who is the Boule, it is essential to be aware were it not for the book written by George Granville Mona G.M. James, we would most likely still be trying to figure out what and when it happened to the point of actually believing the lie of Egypt not being in Africa. Those familiar with my writings on the boule may think I come hard, pulling no punches. True, but at the source of it all, I echo the basic sentiment of James on why this topic is so prevalent. Quote, it must be borne in mind that the first lesson in the humanities is to make a people aware of their contribution to civilization, and the second lesson is to teach them about other civilizations. By this dissemination of the truth about the civilization of individual peoples, a better understanding among them and a proper appraisal of each other should follow." End quote. Plain and simple, our contribution to civilization has been stolen, plagiarized, and whitewashed, leaving us in the present state of identity theft or a cultural chronic neurodegenerative disease that could be the cousin of Alzheimer's or dementia. James' stolen legacy boldly challenged academia when he released it in 1954, stating, quote, The Greeks were not the authors of Greek philosophy, but the people of North Africa, commonly called the Egyptians. End quote. 